How you doing? Welcome back to the Knee Slapping K-Pop Podcast. Woo! Hey. So it's me, Maria. It's your girl. This Happy is my birthday, birthday episode. Woo. Hey, thank you guys. It's a ladies, ladies. night. Ladies. And it oh, feels yeah. just right. Oh, it's birthday episode. Because they had a boys night. party boys for this night. night. Over there. And now we're so now it's, night. it's girls night. Yeah. Honey, Saturdays maybe for the boys, but Fridays are for the chicas <laughs> over here. We're having fun. But yeah. So actually, we're technically not recording this on my birthday. It's a little bit before because I'm spending my actual birthday with my parents. And they're going to take me and out to a And also, we cannot record so and edit this and do all of that in one day. That's and a singular. So yeah, no, that's, that's too much ridiculous. work. Kayla... Kayla, is Kayla a magic works worker, hard, but not that magic. Yeah. No. We no. no. We love her though for that. The only Thank you, things Kayla. we do quick turnaround oh, on are the Kingdom episodes. Yeah, Kingdom needs a quick turnaround. But <laughs> we like, have to be. I kinda, you don't have a choice. <laughs> I kind of like hate my life the entire time doing that, but it's it's fine. just me and you. That's it's why okay. it can only be me mm-hmm. and you. Oh yes. But anyway, back so to anyways, the topic at hand. Anyway, back to Maria's birthday. <laughs> Back to my birthday. So for my birthday, I this this episode's gonna be hopefully we'll see how consistent I am. And plus with my schedule being kind of whack, because if you don't know for sure, go back to the COVID episode and you'll know why I'm kind of been kind of yeah. Anyways, but I I yes, explain we it do there. have but a anyways, COVID episode um, because everything has a COVID episode. We do have a COVID episode. Everything has a fucking COVID episode at this point. <laughs> but um so um getting back to the topic at hand uh so this is a ser. hopefully will be the start of a series that i'll hopefully have motivation to continue and touch upon occasionally here and there that i've wanted to do since last year actually i don't know how long ago that i've once i've written this episode but i wrote it a while ago i had the motivation at some point last year to write this for this podcast yeah honestly might have but (laughs) here we are a year later (laughs) But life was kind of, on my end, was kind of crazy Mm -hmm. and just, you know, changed jobs, got to a new place, blah, 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 dealing with all that crap, living with relatives for over, like, close to two months, trying to transition to a new apartment, blah, 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 just getting my shit together. Still, I am kind of trying to get my shit together, but, you know. So, finally, I decided, you know, uh, since we're doing birthday episodes, I'm like, you know what, this is it. This is gonna be the time we're gonna fucking do this, finally. And this was what I'm gonna tentatively call like retro mixtape uh which will be a seer hopefully will be a series or just a, a thing that i do once in a while when i feel the motivation to do it talking about uh old school or slash important music acts from the korean music scene that have made an impact in korean music and why not start off with arguably the most influential for korean music modern korean music in general especially for the past almost 30 years, uh, Soteji and boys, and the boys, or Soteji wa Aidu, which is like Soteji and kids in Korean, but same thing, basically. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So yeah, we're going to talk about them, um, go over their history, go over a little bit of what, you know, in my, from me speaking about it, um, what, uh, Korea was kind of like at that point, uh, go, and go over some songs that I selected. Not their entire discography, because it'd be a little bit too long if we did That'll that. There'll be so many, so, so many songs. songs. A lot of, uh, actually, actually, their discography as So Tetchy and Boys is not as long as I thought it was. It's actually quite smaller. Hmm. They, they, for some reason, they did a shit ton of remixes, though. So, uh, and okay. they have, and all yeah, talk but, um, about the, the, a specific sorry. band. <laughs> we'll talk about all three was, of them, but maybe one of the, one one of the boys, boys have one of the boys. opinions about And hopefully... <laughs> and hopefully for one of them, I'll feel motivated to do a, an episode of this in the future, hopefully. Please we'll tell see me it's only how that so pans out, but right. okay, that's, that's my point. I, I want to, because I'm not talking Look. about his solo work in this episode, but I, I feel I wa- his Look. solo work is interesting to, to me that I definitely would like to discuss that. spoiler my opinion on Soteji and boys, <laughs> there's a reason it's called Soteji and boys. <laughs> And the there's boys. a reason that there's one person's name in the front, and and boys is the other two schmucks in the back. <laughs> Just put <laughs> the other two. Schmucks. What do you want me to call them? There's a. I mean, there's, there's a. Yeah, this it is so Teji and boys. The it's they're the and da 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 and etc. Yep, essentially. 
So yeah, I decided to bring my homegirls, my fellow 96 liners, because ironically, this group disbanded in January of 1996. So I'm that. How great. They sense their arrival. It was the end of one like, group in the beginning the of another. <laughs> Let's put it this way. It was the end of one group in the beginning of another, but hey, we won't get to that other we group. we are truly but, uh, that... icons, much like Soteji and boys. <laughs> <laughs> we are true icons. So anyways, so I guess, uh, I guess, um, uh, and, and so, um, I'll talk, besides talking about their history and some of their more notable songs, which is about six of them, after I, you know, do an overview of their history and whatnot, um, we will go through these songs and kind of, I guess, chronological chronological release oh. order and discuss whether we like them or not essentially and you know you know all that jazz and then give our kind of final thoughts about their music and maybe the group in the end if, if we would continue w listening to them or not after this so yeah hopefully th uh, well, this format could potentially change in the future um i also want to say in advance um a lot of the information some of this information is kind of hard to come by history wise because a lot of it's whatever has been translated into English and with older groups it's sometimes a little bit more difficult to find information and it's also better, like but it's the 90s it's not the, best. the internet wasn't really the 90s in the, like South Korea yeah. which like South none of us Korea. here who speak Korean and also it was just yeah. the 90s generally wasn't that much on the yeah. internet just yeah. as a whole and, and yeah and especially with some history stuff, I, there may be certain things I might have gone wrong, but I did try to look through multiple sources to try to get it as accurately as possible. But hey. But if there are things that are inaccurate, just know I'm not doing it intentionally. It's probably something that was mistranslated into English that for some reason I thought was factual, but is maybe not that factual. So I apologize in advance, but this is as close to as factual as I can get in and English like, as I can. And like the motto but, of this um, podcast yeah. has slowly become, if you don't like it, yell about it in the comments. We can use the internet at yes. this point. All interaction is. I, I'm not a historian, and I'm not a historian. Uh, I don't have a PhD in this, but I just want to give a some PhD new, especially, in so tangible especially voice. Yeah, the, the so tangible <laughs> voice PhD. I guess so. A fan PhD, an unofficial PhD, if you will. But um, I just want. I mainly want to do this to introduce, you know, especially newer or K-pop fans who haven't really explored older. Or older groups and acts that were popular maybe before some of the current groups they've gone into like second third or fourth generation potentially you know to be like hey maybe check these guys out see the the influence of these guys of these current groups coming out you know some music they might have liked you know as it's a way to expose it and explore a little bit more of a I guess you could say music pop culture some music pop culture history from South Korea so um yeah so um any other um, things you two want to say before I get started on my quote unquote brief history? Caleb, bleep this out. Fuck right YG. Well, I, think we can ke I think we can keep that. I feel like that's a safe opinion to just have. The man, YG. At this point, it kind of is. The man. Yes, the, the man. man. The, man. the man. man, yes. All and right. Possibly, and the so, company, because um, fuck all K pop companies who are inherently evil corporations. I guess. Screw but everyone, also, I guess. Specifically, fuck the man, YG. Yes. <laughs> Just putting it out. All right. And so, all right. And without further ado, let's get started. So we are discussing Soteji and Boys, arguably the most influential group in modern Korean music. Their members consisted of Soteji, Lee Juno, and Yan Hyun Sung. Which, if you don't know, uh, Yan their discography suck <laughs> is the YG of YG. I don't YG think people, I don't think enough people know that that man is the same man. Not enough people. No, nor do they know that he actually was yeah, a dancer. He can dance. Which you yeah, see him. He's a dancer. He's technically he, he did. a rap. Technically, he's a one rapper. of the boys. He's one of the boys in Soteji and Boys. Mm hmm. Which is, is crazy. Weird. But yeah, so which this is also why I so said this was a group that was, yeah. at the beginning. I don't think enough. <laughs> we gotta we gotta make that correlation that I'm just randomly. We don't. We don't. We haven't said it. We haven't made it known well enough yeah, yet. Yeah, I don't think but enough people YG. realize that because I don't think people know that that is a person. That is this man's history. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Soteji and Boys. Uh, their run was from. Uh, 1992 to uh, January 1996, the albums they released were Soteji and Boys, Soteji and Boys 2, Soteji and Boys 3, and Soteji and Boys 4. Clearly, of all albums. 
But you know what? It gets the point I across. Guess. And uh, some of the song, and as a precursor, um, we'll get into. There's gonna be six songs we're gonna cover. I'm just mentioning them off the right now. We're gonna talk about I know, anyhow song, dreaming of ballet, classroom idea, must triumph, and come back home. And now the history. So to set the scene here, and I'm and I'm reading this off of a thing that I typed up, so so I can keep it almost straightforward. So the year is 1992. The year the Cold War, I think at this point, officially ended. The start of Cartoon <laughs> Network. The first non-military president was elected in South Korea <laughs> since 1961. And this also included the birth of a lot of future Korean idol music acts, including Sunmi, uh, Sohee, and Hyerim of, you know, former Wonder Girls members, Hani from EXID, Hekyon Chen and Chanyeol from EXO, Mino and Sunghoon from Winna, from Winna uh, Ken from Vex, Hyuna, of course, a four minute and just and Hyuna Maker fame. And Zico. All of Hyuna fame. And Wonder Girls, oh, yeah. definitely. Oh, yeah. And Wonder Girls. Zico of Block B. Yeah. FX, uh, Amber from FX, Moonbeal from Mamamoo. And of course, last but not definitely not least, Jin of BTS fame. And it was the year that you could argue the modern Korean pop music scene would be forever changed. But what led to that? essentially that faithful day of night of, of april 11th 1982 to be a day that changed the korean music scene as we know it forever but first we must go back a little bit a couple more decades prior actually back to 1966 and so um for those of you, well, maybe a little bit further back, actually. So for those of you who aren't a little bit aware of more modern Korean history, beginning of the 20th, to summarize it as quickly as possible, beginning of the 20th century, they were a colony under Japan. You know, Japan was evil, blah, blah, blah. World War II happened. They kind of got free of that shackle. But then, of course, Korea, the Korean Peninsula erupted in, a, in its own war, the Korean War, which ended in uh, 53 with, of course, North Korea and South Korea, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but both countries, what a lot of people don't know is that South Korea was still under a military dictatorship. And when we're going to back to 1996, uh, this was when uh, Korean Arts and Cult Culture Ethics Committee, roughly translated, of course, was established by the former president slash dictator, depending, of course, how you view it, Park Chun-hee, who is the father of that Park gun hye aka the first oh. female president of South Korea, aka the one that also uh -huh. got the boot several years ago. She, 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 she's tied up in some corruption shit, but she's going to be in jail for a, a very long, time. long time. Anyways, so, <laughs> very long time. She did Just look up the peaceful protests and you'll find out. That's a whole other that topic. Like a, yeah, a whole that other is topic that's a whole we can get into. No, so that's know, a long. Will not be a topic we will talk about. Today. Either way, Honestly, either way, I'm, I'm gonna say it right now. Not a topic we're ever gonna talk about on this podcast. If you care, go. No, <laughs> we will not be covering the unless for history. some reason I decide to go rogue and talk about some Korean history to y'all. But it ain't happening today, honey. Or no, at least not that deep in that corner of the globe. We're talking about, of course, fun, more. None fun of us are qualified history. to talk about that. Let's be honest with ourselves. Not completely, except more in a learning kind of phase. But yeah, so uh, so um, under Park Chun Hee, this Korean Arts and Cultural Ethics Committee was founded, which eventually this committee kind of became more became the more current Korea Media Rating Board, and this um, essentially allowed the government, excuse me, at the time, to uh, control the censorship of anything on TV broadcasts, film performances, and audio recordings that were. You know, especially on things that were deemed, quote-unquote, too sensitive for the public and not morally sound. And this organization does still exist to this day, with mainly their latest concerns. Big things that they're mostly big on is, like, making sure tattoos are covered or blurred, blaring inappropriate choreography, which tends to mainly target the more female dancers and artists. Uh, and, and, of course, censoring, preventing uh, songs with lyrics ranging from swearing to mentioning... Uh, essentially product placement such as Sprite or a Samsung Galaxy And that's phone, also kind of, even. not to interject, but that's also kind of why if any of you watch dramas, it's why all the knives are always blurred. In a way. It's the same situation. And yeah, anything any that violence, gets used as like a weapon, yes, it, it gets, gets blurred. blurred. Yeah. That's the same sort of situation going on. That's why it happens. Yeah. And that's why you don't see that, you see, you hear about, for example, um, Akmu act on musician um they had a song band called galaxy because they thought it they were talking about the galaxy even though they thought it was 
going to be in connection to the galaxy Samsung yeah. phone, which is oh, yeah. stupid because yeah. they're talking mm-hmm. about the planets. But either yeah. way, it's that's what people in Korea associate galaxy. Yeah, no one with. can say Instagram in any context in a song. That has to be changed. Or why Lotto EXO's Lotto had to be changed. Oh yeah, that because got they're banned. not even talking about the the company. They're talking about like lot hitting the lot just as a general as a general anything, term yeah any, korea's really anything that can be construed korea's really as a brand picky. you can't mm-hmm. say yeah korea is like crazy picky when it comes they, to like they have rules against copyright advertising about that you cannot in a way i understand it in that you do not want people to be advertised to when they are not known i guess it does go a bit too far but that is sort of the mentality yeah, it does, behind it, does, it, it in is some to situations, yeah a ridiculous amount of advertising like, in some ways, it's fine, but in other yeah. ways, it's kind of stupid. And sometimes the only way these products can be shown is if the the, the, the company that has those products is sponsoring mm-hmm. something right. for it or paying for it. It's 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 weird. Anyways, but um, but that's, I guess, the current focus of the Korean media ratings board. Um, but once the latest president after Park Chun-hee, uh, Chung Do Hwan, I think I said his name hopefully correctly, took over. He essentially closed all the commercial TV stations and licensed only two channels. And if you pay attention to either dramas or variety, or maybe even some Korean news, depending what kind of person you are, you would know these channels. If you might have heard the Korean Broadcasting System, KBS, or the uh, Munhwa Broadcasting Corporation, NBC. Yeah, they're pretty old. Uh, from the late 60s, early 70s old. And the exposure of music to South Korea, uh, South Korean citizens, was filtered essentially through these two, bro- through KBS and NBC, which essentially created a monopoly on music. And since the music shows on these channels were very popular and seen essentially by the whole country, and plus there were no, you know, music charts or sales to like track music then at the time. And getting those week- getting on those weekly music shows was almost like a guaranteed, you know, great. E- was, was almost guaranteeing these artists like great influence and popularity in a way. And so um, a fun, an interesting fact too about these stations, uh, these two implemented a kind of star system for these music acts. And this was where the studio provided like their own uh, studio bands, choreographers, dancers, songwriters, and conductors, and then requ- and essentially, you know, required this singer, you know, to perform with whatever type of combination they wanted to throw out for whatever performance they were performing for the day, whatever, you know, and none of these performers, re- none of these like artists really had a uh, creative control over how the contents of these performances would be shown or the production or the dancing or the outfits. This was all essentially regulated by the studios, by these broadcasting camp companies. And this type of control over performances really did limit a lot of the music diversity in Korea, Korea to a lot of either maybe your kind of simplistic uh, ba- pop song, but mostly it's, it was a lot of ballads or trot songs that took that were really popular. And that also, um, and, and, and these, um, you know, in these company in these broadcasting stations took charge of the direction of the music consumption in Korea to essentially occur, occur through television. So since like the beginnings of like really popular music in South Korea, a lot of it was done through television, very visually, which as you could probably argue has definitely left a great influence in current, um, Korean idol music consumption and just performances in general in Korea. And, and this, and this, you know, this placed a huge importance on image from appearance to, uh, from, uh, from the, uh, an artist's appearance to their performances to, you know, a lot of the song content of these artists ended up becoming, you know, very important over time. And the influence of these music shows that, you know, would eventually be created like Inky Gayo, Music Bank, and like Mnet Countdown are still seen today um, as well. And even with Korea becoming a democracy finally in 1987 and then opening itself up to the world by the 1988 Olympics, Summer Olympics in Seoul, you know, the broadcasting companies still continue to be pretty strict on the type of music being broadcasted, which almost led to the risk of essentially the Korean music scene kind of dying out by the early 90s. And, you know, in the midst of these early, in the early 90s, in these early days of democracy, you know, exposure to Western entertainment and media and um, Western soft power, you know, increase. And through an uptick of economic prosperity, there was a young 17-year-old named Chon Hyun Chul. And he dropped, he decided to drop out of high school at 17. He decided to go ahead and uh, pursue his um, uh, a career in music. 
and thought that kind of school got in the way of accomplishing that. And he gave himself the stage name of Soteji and decided to join Korea's first heavy metal band, Shinawi, as a bassist. So yeah, and he did this until the band split up in 1991. And it was then that time, uh, you know, Soteji decided to uh, play around some music. He discovered uh, MIDI, I think it's how you say it, M-I-D-I technology, um, and like, um, you know, things to play around with music and whatnot, and he started to utilize it in what he was creating. And then eventually he got in contact with um, Lee Juno and, um, uh, he, and Yan Hyun Suk to learn some dancing and also to recruit them as dancers for a group he wanted to create. And Yan claimed after hearing uh, Taeji's music that he was so impressed and offered to join uh, Taeji and perform with him. And of course, shortly after that, they got Lee Juno, and who was also a top dancer in Korea at the time. The e and Yang were pretty top, were considered to be pretty solid, good dancers at the time. Of course, the uh, caliber of dancing has definitely changed in recent years, but, you know. Uh, and so Ian Yang essentially became the backup vocalist and uh, main performers and dancers of the group, while Taeji became the main vocalist, writer, and producer for the group. And their first, and their first album, So Taeji and the Boys, was released on March 23rd, 1992. And the album was really the first of its kind in Korean, being kind of influenced by genres that were popular, especially in the States at the time, such as hip-hop, New Jack, swing, rock, and R&B. And then on this fateful day of, of the April 11th, 1992 arrived. So the group managed to secure a spot on uh, NBC's uh, weekend music show. I forget what it was called at the time. But the group, you know, the group decided to come on. They chose a clothes, the certain types of weirdly patterned clothes and... Um, and they danced without backup dancers, so they were dancing the whole time and singing. Taeji wrote all their music and continued to do so going forward. And then uh, on this music show, reportedly, um, it was kind of like a rating system where people would rate their performances. And they had a panel of judges, and the judges were not a big fan of it. But, you know, and they, they, and they gave, and, you know, the sh you know, had an audience and a judge score. And the judges were like, you know, hey, this is weird. What the heck? You know, because a lot of these guys, you know, were older and whatnot. And, they, you know, this was probably the first time they were exposed to music like this. And, um, however, that performance really caught on with the youth. And they're like, whoa, this is super cool. And this is it's similar to the West, but in Korean, you know, kind of the old. It's like, whoa, you can do this stuff while seeing Korean and rapping? Whoa. So, obviously, you know. Teenagers and, you know, more young adults were like, this is super dope. And so um, this and that performance did help uh, skyrocket um, Nan Arayo to number one for 17 weeks. That's over four months on the music charts. Goddamn. And it also helped improve, like, other songs within that album as well, which I'll mention a couple of them later on. But um, it also started the trend. It also, like, really kickstarted the trend of, like, essentially performing and promoting off other songs from their albums too, including songs like, which I'll get into a little bit later, In the Time Spent With You, Morbality, You and the Fantasy, As the Night Goes On, and My Everything. And they would continue to do this too with subsequent albums where they release the albums, obviously have a big title track, but also promote other songs within that album. And this was also a trend that other artists down the line would continue to do as well. Um, and the second and third albums definitely had more... Second album still have some pop influence, but, you know, the title track for that, um, Anyhow, song definitely had more of a rock feel to it. And the third album, for sh by that point, had way more influences of rock, similar to, like, it, I, I view it as more like a Rage Against the Machine, but, you know, kind of like grunge, kind of like the rock that was kind of popular in the States at the time. And, of course, they continued to sell a lot of records. They broke millions, selling over millions and millions of records and whatnot. And even so, the group was just, you know, business group, they didn't go through the music industry with a squeaky clean image. They had some controversy. And not necessarily because at the time of bad behavior from the members, but more so to do with, you know, their lyrical content and then, I guess, their physical appearances. And, you know, you remember that uh, Korean Arts and Culture Ethics Council that I mentioned and how strict they kind of are with, you know, what shows up on TV? Well, yeah, they, um... They decided to update their name to Public Performance Ethics Committee, and the group essentially became an easy target for them because they were just like, you know, they just they stood out like a sore thumb, and they were just like, what the heck? What is this monstrosity? How dare you wear weirdly patterned clothes and overalls and crazy ass hats with the tags on and backpacks while dancing? You know, they, yeah, there were some older folks that were just like not into that fashion. 
And, you know, they wore, I mean, hell, they wore clothes like from Boy London, Moschino, uh, ripped jeans, you know. Hell, they had even some braided hair, some earrings, all that jazz. And, and down the line, they dyed their hair crazy colors and whatnot. And the group also had certain songs that were banned from being performed on TV or from even potentially being put onto albums. The most controversial song probably was Classroom Idea from their third album. It did eventually pass the council, but that was initially banned from TV and radio due to lyrics criticizing the Korean education system at the time, which in a lot of ways their lyrics still are kind of relevant today, but again, that's a whole other topic for a whole other time. And it was accused of potentially um, backmasking satanic messages. Oh, or fun. where? Yeah, they, they accused it as that. <laughs> um, but but eventually, a lot, a lot of people made an uproar about it, and they're like, "Let this song be put on the album. Don't ban it. Blah blah blah. Let him perform it." They changed their mind. And another song uh, too they had in their fourth album, "Regret the Times," was also banned because of lyrics that essentially criticized the government. Because very sensitive, I guess. Uh, but of course, so Techi straight up refused to change or remove the lyrics in question. And, and it was those fans that were, the, since they gathered such a huge, quick following, they, they protested a lot. That in a pre, in the pre censorship system for music being released was essentially abolished in 1996 because of that. And so they had a fun, you know, little career. And then early 1996 came and the guys decided to split. And they saw the activities. And fans were reportedly very extremely upset at the news um, to the point that there were people that were, I don't, I don't, I've heard that there were rumors that certain fans committed suicide because of this, but don't quote me on that one. And if so, I don't want to, you know, that's more of a serious matter. Please don't do that, people, if an artist or group decides to break up. But um, uh, reportedly, that's that, that was what was happened. But people were very upset because... That's how big these guys were. They were hugely influential amongst the youth. They they were like almost like Jesus or gods walking around. It was crazy, especially Soteji, especially him. Um, so what happened to them essentially? Um, so E Jun Ho, we'll talk about him because he's the one that doesn't have as much information at the moment. But um, he went and established a record label. He released some music. There isn't too much in English about him. But the only thing, big thing I could say is that he married someone 23 years younger than himself, and he also has gotten in trouble with the law for being allegedly Agreed. being accused of allegedly assaulting Alleged. uh -huh. multiple women, and did apparently have to serve about two years in jail. Oh, because one, of it. Lovely. Well, I mean, is it a lovely human if being? If you've gone to prison for it, do we have to say allegedly? <laughs> if you've gone to well, jail, I, I think I think it was allegedly more, but I think he okay. might have gotten in trouble so for he one got of them. I'm not so the one sure. he got in trouble for, creepy. either way, terrible. He did assault right. her, and then yeah. allegedly he did more. Which again, I'm gonna put out there. Yeah, you do one, still you bad. Probably do more. Just saying, but allegedly, don't All right. sue us. All right, I think I'll I'll I, I, I I'm gonna switch. I'll, one thing around. I'm going to talk about Sotechi first, though, before we get. Oh to yeah, we're we're saving the one but, um, we have Sotechi. opinions on for last. <laughs> so um, Sotechi, um, who I hopefully I'll get to talk a little bit more I about. I like Sotechi. In, uh, possibly a future Teji, future episode. So he initially announced his retirement and went to live in the states. He actually has visited the states quite a bit, actually, over the years. Did not know um, he lived in the states. And, <laughs> and apparently knows English. Oh no, yeah, his English pretty is solidly. pretty good. Either way. Anyway, the dude released an album in 1998, surprised, came back, and then came back to Korea physically in the year physically. 2000 and released Ultimania, which I really like that album. Just want to put a sign out there. I think it's a fun album. I include some songs and uh, hopefully, I think it will hopefully appear in a future episode of that. But uh, yeah, that's a good album. I definitely recommend if you like rock to check it out at least. But, um, but during his time, he, uh, he was secretly married to, uh, I think it was an actress, I forget her name, I'm sorry, honey, but she, he also during that time separated from his first wife. Oh, oh, oh it was E. Jinha, sorry. And the public didn't find out, actually, until she sued him in 2011 <laughs> for 5 billion won, which is roughly about 5 Dollars. million USD. Yeah. So, so it's not actually a billion no. dollars to what Americans would know it as, but still, it's a lot of money. Of her share uh, for for her share of the marital properties, and then 500 million won in alimony, and you know that eventually got set out of court. That was how people found out. Oh shit, he was married, and then eventually he met his second wife, actress who I, I don't think she really does a lot of acting anymore. But E, 
uh, Lee Eun Sung, and uh, he met her on the set of his music video for Bermuda Triangle in 2008. They married in 2013, and they had a daughter in 2014, right around his release of his most recent project, Quiet Night, um, which is, yeah, it's, it's still his most recent work to date, uh, with, with like songs. I remember first discovering them. Christmas, was it Chris Malo Wine? I think I say it, Win, and then uh, Song Gyo. Song Gyo Dun, which actually IU did her own version of that song too. Both I really like, but um, anyways. And then in 20, into 2017, he had a 25th debut anniversary music project where other artists covered some of his, uh, some of, um, you know, songs of his own solo songs and from his group, from his time as So Tiji and Boys, including BTS for a song we are going to talk about later. Uh, the BTS cover is actually pretty solid. I like it. Home, I will say. And then, but then, and then we got the man, the, 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 I'm not calling say him legend. a legend, no, that's not doing it, time. no refuse. In some ways he's a legend, I mean, but yes, in other ways he, he's a controversial so one. Are, in some so ways, are, yes. So are a lot of serial killers, but you know. <laughs> True. Anyways, Yen Hyun Suk, he and this dude had an interesting time. He also went on to establish an entertainment You agency. may have heard of it. And this... You might have heard of it. Uh, after a couple initial failures, he they finally got big with the act Genu Sean, which I hope to actually cover eventually in the future because I really like their music. From his young label, helped propel initially helped propel the company to success, and it was named renamed that company to as we know today YG Entertainment. And the company went on to become one of what is still currently considered to be the big three, big maybe four, more, at this point of, the big I four, kind of what big hit. Now it's more so Big Four with acts such as One Time, Big Bang, especially with Big Bang, 2021, Blackpink, Winner, Icon, and more recently, Treasure. In One 2019, of those groups is due not to like the uh, I'm putting it out there. I forget Treasure's there. Yeah, let's be honest. I forget here. Treasure is a part yeah. of YG constantly. Jeez. And due to so in 2019, due to controversy from the what was at the time considered the burning Mukda scandal, which is a huge ass scandal of itself. Which again, definitely not deserves something its own we can video cover to be covered. Right now. There were so many freaking threads in our K pop oh about God, that. It was it's a hot a mess. Disaster. That that's a that's a whole other scandal. But because of stuff related to him and YG artist Kersunri <laughs> from the <laughs> We don't Bang. mention him anymore. <laughs> we and other don't stuff that YG, him. the entertainment and him was co- accused of. It, because of these scandals, he and his own brother step down from their positions within the company Do however they yourselves. still are big shareholders yes. of the company so while they're not like the ceo and the president of the company anymore Do not kid yourselves they're, they're still, making still a ridiculous in controlling behind the scenes and anything you yeah. buy from so, yg entertainment do just know that they are getting money from that make yeah. peace with and that he also you- uh before this before this scandal he also married a former member of his first school group sweet Sweetie, I, I think, think I say it. Yeah. Who is 12 years Ooh. his younger, who also was the sister of a member of okay. Jackie's, okay. which is oh, yeah, another I forgot about, oh, yeah, cover. I forgot. But yeah. also, I, I don't even who? think he needs, I, <laughs> Who they also signed under YG, yes! like, yes, yes, I don't years yeah, after they're... they disbanded. Yes, they are now under YG. And, and also, and before I forget, YG also released his own solo album, and I think either nine, I want to say 97 or 96, but he only did that once, and that was it. I don't think it was popular. But anyways, continue, Sammy. I think now is your time to uh, look. Shine I think we need YG. to talk uh-huh. specifically <laughs> about why why it's weird that uh, him and his wife. I think we need to get into more of that. In that he fucking we do like no. It's not just that he was her boss. That's weird. He fucking destroyed that girl group because because he was attracted to someone twelve years his younger and his employee. That's one, Mm -hmm. that's the first thing. He specifically Mm -hmm. destroyed that girl group, didn't give them promotion, didn't give them comebacks to try to get with her. That's fucked. And it's a shame, because her song, I'll Be There, is actually pretty slaps. It's like on par with what's like, that's the only song I know from them, but that song's on par with some songs that were coming out in the States. Yeah. I'm like, this is pretty good. Mm -hmm. That's, like, there's some, what could have been? Like, I'm not putting anything out there, but that's weird power dynamics between him and his wife. First. Like, that's just, like, the first thing that makes him a creep. Two, I, YG has always just given me bad vibes. 
since forever. And he's a, he's a very guy. creepy guy. The way he, like, just stories about YG. No one has ever had a fully, like, totally fine interaction with this man. Everyone only talks about how much of a shithead he is. His own groups talk about how much of a shithead he is sometimes. He is called 21 Ugly to their faces. And that's one of the biggest stories about 21 is that they were called ugly by their CEO to their face. <laughs> like, what the fuck? And even when he's calling someone pretty, it's an insult. Because that's what he said about Blackpink. Blackpink is a prettier 21. And I'm like, that's also oh, fucked. Man. That's also weird. Yep. He's men in Korea are kind of misogynistic. No, but like, I, yes, <laughs> yes. I'm not saying no in a lot the older men, especially. But YG <laughs> has just given me like worse than normal vibes. He's a very creepy oh, yeah. man. Do not support this man's. He's a weird. He's mm. and then also like the yeah. definitely like look. Everything that came out post Burning Sun, not to go into the specifics of like the really bad shit, but the fact that he probably is embezzling money from his own company and dodging taxes, I fully believe that. Yes. Him and like a lot yes. of those CEOs, Most probably CEOs. Of the companies. Most I have no CEOs. Doubt. Which is why I, I, I genuinely yeah. do not a, I don't understand the K pop thing of standing companies. Don't stand a company. Oh, stand yeah. company. Never That's stand a company a bad people. Idea. A company is a company, though. They're to make money. Yes, yeah. and the higher up people it. in these companies have definitely <laughs> abused your idols. I don't care what idol you stand, they've been abused at some point by somebody in their company. Most likely monetarily and emotionally. And emotionally. I'm not saying Hopefully physical. Not I mean, we have anybody, seen but. cases of physical abuse. And sexual yeah, like abuse. children, too. And, yeah, no, there's been a lot of, like, every kind of abuse has happened in the industry that we have proven, but mostly it's emotional abuse, which is, again very bad abuse that they will go through for years because their contracts are seven years long. Very long time. And sometimes may or may not reportedly be allegedly subtly Subtly, allegedly, maybe. It. Like, kind of behind the scenes, they might actually oh, yeah, be longer yeah. than they we come went through out and all say, that. Oh, yeah. And if you want to see a very fictionalized bullshit retelling of that, please look up <laughs> Jessica's book. We have a podcast on it. Don't read it. It's shit. <laughs> That's a great episode. I fucking love that episode. <laughs> I had to read that really book. Do. It needs more views, guys. It's literally us just like complaining about it. I didn't even read the book and I'm just there. Yeah, complaining Kayla's about there it with me hour. and she's just like, oh, that sounds like it sucks. I'm like, yeah, I had to read yeah. it. <laughs> then again, I was half I did read like half of it while we were doing a quarter rate right, once. A quarter oh on God. podcast. Because I was just like, yeah, no, this is fine. I'm just going to skim can't through just, this. I can't just be doing this, yeah. Um, it's just so, it's so long. The book was not even that long, but it was so long. It felt oh so God. long. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm very happy I did oh not God. buy it. I, I got good. it from my local library. Anyways. Everyone, please support your local libraries. They are institutions that do great work. If, if, you're, if they're open still. You I don't can know pr they um, are, Most of them are doing are. the whole you reserve it and then go get it and then leave. So support your local library, everybody. Go if you want to read Jessica's book, get it from your library. Don't buy it. And it's free. And it's free. Yeah. You get the free. It's a free, 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 free. 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 Anyways, to go back to the topic anyways, at hand well, and now, not supporting our local are, communities. Yes. So this, so to summarize, um, this so Teji and Boys can be argued to be probably the most influential artists from Korea in the music industry. Period. Possibly. Their choices in fashion, music genres, and lyrical content really helped spark a huge revitalization of popular music in Korea. And their music has been proven to have been influential towards the creation of music from idol groups, even hip-hop artists, indie bands, and R&B artists, even. And showing that Korean, that the Korean language, that Korean can be, you know, Korean hangu, the language can be used with those genres still, kind of like the Western counterparts can. And now, on to the songs. And going in chronological order of release, starting with the one, the only, I know. The song that kicked it off for everybody. All right, uh, who wants to go first? I mean, I um, have... Anyone? Again, I have said before that, again, there is a very big difference. There's a reason this group is called... And this is sort of a, a continuing thing throughout all of these songs... There's a reason it's called Soteji and Boys, and that I find there that is, Soteji yeah, is one far more really. talented than the other two. <laughs> this yeah. is his group. 
he is the star. And just putting it out there. Like, I like the song. It's vi- Everything they do is very 90s, and that's not particularly my favorite genre generally. But I like the energy. It's fun. And I like mm-hmm. Sotigi. I do like it. It does It does sound very typical of, like, what you would, like, just, like, a and general, I, yeah. like, a 90s song. And I get that. Um, but I think it is very representative of, like, what music was like yeah. in that time And I get that they're, Korea. partially, it's the fact that they, again, it happens a lot of times with people that make a trend, the imitators kind of dilute down their own sound anyway. So, like, of course it sounds like everything else, everyone else was trying to do the same thing. So, like, they kind of fall victim to their own success where it's, like, people come in to do the same thing. So everything sounds the same. <laughs> also, YG's not a good rapper. I'm just gonna di- I'm just gonna make that man. <laughs> I mean, every to be fair, time, a lot- every- I'm just gonna be honest, a lot of the early rappers in Korean music- I mean, a lot of the mid- I mean, great. look, I'm gonna be- I'm gonna, I'm gonna just give a very, very controversial- st- Hopefully not a controversial- st- I don't know how unpopular this opinion is. Rapping in K-pop only started getting good more recently than mo- than you think. Like it's not in K-pop, and like, not in K- not talking K-hip hop or anything like that. K-pop rapping yeah. only started getting pretty good last couple yes. of years. There were outliers before, but for the vast majority, they were serviceable at best. Oh yeah, they were there to do a job. Because everyone yes. thought they needed <laughs> rap when you don't. Apparently. And now it's just like a staple of like K-pop. You music, have to it's have like a every, rapper. Like every group just has Look, a rapper. A K- and I was like, you don't need that. Honestly, Sotae G is probably a big well, part yeah. of the reason why that became the thing. Even though they're not an idol group. No, yeah. but, they're the fact, probably a but huge before Sotae G, there why. were no idol groups. H.O.T. wouldn't debut yeah. for yeah. another like, like two years. Things. They were in 98, right? No, uh, HOT was 96. But that was right when they disbanded. So, like, from 92, yeah. there were no idol groups before this. So they are, yeah, in a I way, honestly the template forget. for no, I think, I think, I think they were, but they just not, were not, not that popular. No, not the way, not the training system idol groups. I'm talking, like, your stereotypical K-pop idol group is not a thing until HOT. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't really yeah. exist. There were groups yeah, and that I think that a and lot sang. of them are more influenced well, yeah. by Sotiji than the previous idol groups they wanted to do that so then you just take a training system make them better dancers make them possibly like more trained singers and then you get hot later on and i forget how yeah. much earlier hot or not hot but so teji and the boys was in comparison to like sage keys and like yeah. hot and like shin because I thought, it was like I oh, genuinely yeah. they were all expected, several years yeah, later i always ex- yeah. i always thought that yeah, they the overlapped but they don't because they right they don't Right like they when were gone H-O-T before I all those groups were like oh, Sotichi yeah. and boys. Sotichi and boys overlapped with other artists that I hope mm-hmm. I'll be able to talk but about. But they never overlapped but... with like your... so there definitely were other yeah. artists and groups per se but, that like, were not definitely your stereotypical, by Sotichi, but... not stereotypical, but like not your stereotypical true, like first like, gen first like K-pop, K-pop boy groups because those they artists yeah, yeah no they weren't they weren't like necessarily that. I think that when you're talking about K-pop, like there's Korean pop idol groups that are there. And I wouldn't even I wouldn't even say mm-hmm. Sotiji is K-pop because I think when you look at K-pop, especially now, you're talking about the system. You're talking about training system. Yeah. You're talking about all of that. That comes along with when you think of K-pop, and nothing mm-hmm. before HOT did that. So they're almost their own genre. You mean you mean? No, Sotiji? I wouldn't even call Sotiji true oh. like K-pop. Oh, K-pop. Yeah. I think that they're a precursor. But HOT is like your first K-pop group because that's the training system. That's the stereotype. Sote G is almost this like yeah, weird yeah. hybrid of K-pop and K-hip-hop. Like they're they're an almost or, genre of or themselves. Maybe, or a really rock, rock influence. influence too. They are they rock are pretty heavily they're like rock in their own yeah. genre of rock. because like you have the rap element, you have the pop element, you have the rock element. They're their own thing in a way. Yeah, they really set up the, like the groundwork of being like, "Hey, you can have cool looking fashion and dancing." Cool, you know, for they, the time. it wasn't cool refined, for the time. but they set the groundwork for. I'm I'm the watching this right now, start. and we're gonna go with cool for the time fashion because I love this man's little peace sign necklace right there. <laughs> 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 it was 
this man's peace sign necklace oh God, and sweatpants yeah. that are essentially capris. <laughs> I, I, I honestly, my favorite thing has to be Sotoji wearing the bucket hats for oh, the, bucket bucket hat. the fucking bucket hats. I love them. I'm like, oh, what, it's, what a, it's a lot. I love it's them. a lot. But it's a lot. The, the backpacks, backpacks and, and the other stuff. Yeah, the backpacks. Like, yeah. <laughs> but generally, I like this. Like, song. it's fun. Mm-hmm. All right, Kayla, what about you? Yeah, I think it is pretty, um, just. It's kind of generic sounding in terms of like whatever the like sort of night like what I what I think a song from the nineties sounds like should sound like yeah, um, but I'd, that's probably because they they were a big part of like sort of defining what that was for Korean music to begin with. But I did like it. It's a fun song, and I'm not a big fan of like retro music really. I mean, I think neither of us are a big fan of re- like you pick the two people from this podcast. I am. No, but we're here. <laughs> The two people that do not like retro sounding. I like certain retro sounds, but uh, they need to have like a modern element, which means that I can't just listen to retro music. I mean, yo, I grew up with like my parents. My parents grew up in the eighties, so there's a lot of eighties music and like seventies music, and I'm like, and of course, I'm like a sucker for like the nineties, early two thousands kind of like song vibe. It's Marie, very every once in a while, so we will try I'm to not do. Like a, I'm like a girl. I listen to Hillary Duff. I mean, recently, I love Hillary Duff. Hillary Duff is different. I love Hillary Duff. <laughs> I'm like a step Beyonce. I mean, we're. I don't even like the the modern songs that are retro inspired. Like, I don't even like that. Yeah, so. Kayla. Hates, oh, some some of those some are of those shit. Are just, some of those are shit. Mega Trainer, Megan Trainer. No, we're talking okay, about K-pop songs. Her songs. We don't like. Oh, yeah, we're talking I about see. the K-pop. Generally, as a concept, and like retro music is like not a thing that yeah. I really ever. Yeah, I think buy. it depends on the era we're we're going back to. But generally, yeah. what I will say, and what I I like about it, that a lot of, and this is just generally so tiggy, I like the rock elements, because I do think that that was a forerunner of like. K-pop I do enjoy now. Can we bring that back? I want more rock K-pop Can songs. We... There, There is rock. There is Korean no, rock no, no, music, no, no, except no. a lot of the really good K-pop. stuff is, like, indie. I, no, 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 no. I, will I say. want K-pop groups to bring rock elements into their... I don't want full... I oh, want, yeah, that'd like, be fantastic. rock elements into K-pop, because we really only get that from some of the bands. You get it with, the, you get it with bands, some of and that's the, really it, but not even all the bands are Yeah, doing even it, it depends so. on the- some of the bands do it, and then some of the bands try to be sad boys. Some of the bands are just pop or bands. pop bands so or like... sad boy bands. And yeah. I love sad boy bands and pop bands. I want more bands generally. K-pop groups. K-pop companies. I know I called you corporate bands. shills before, but- Please, more K-pop bands. <laughs> I miss bands, rock please. and pop music. Honestly. I want more K-pop yeah, bands. I but I want like I want to because every every once in a while, like at an end of the year award show, a group will do like a rock remix or they'll do it with a live band, and it slaps. Whatever yeah, song. Yeah, there's been a trend lately yeah. of doing live band ver- like covers of songs. And, Would like, you give, say it's knee yes! slapping? Give me more it's of a knee slapping moment when pe- <laughs> when slapping. groups do a rock cover of. <laughs> we never use that phrase ever. <laughs> They slap a bitch. <laughs> it's appropriate that it's on your birthday episode because you are the one that came up with it. Because you are the one who coined yes. that phrase. Yes, yes it was yeah. you. Yeah. How the hell that's did why. That that's literally why this podcast is named. Because that. you said that one time and we burst into laughter. And I thought it was so funny, and then we made it like a command that it was like Star Maria, and it's like that makes me want to slap my knee. And then it somehow we were trying to come up with podcast names about a year ago, and we're like, I mean. We do say this now a lot, so it's the knee slapping K pop podcast. It, it was on our group chat was named. It was called Knee Slapper. Yes. <laughs> I I had a shitty group chat name. It was like I forget, it was like three chickens and then a European and, mutt and, and then, then you I came along. Like and, yeah. yeah, and then it was we we are a weird fr- one of these days we need to just We're fucking weird group of people. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days, we do actually need oh, to God. make a, just an episode about how the fuck we all became friends. How the fuck this is even like? Why are we right now? I, I, think, I think what I've learned is that I'm basically the reason all this well, shit Well, no, happened. it's really, me, a lot Sammy. of it but is just the me. fact that we talked <laughs> yeah. for months before we met any of the, any of the other knee slappers, if you will. 
And most of the time, it was just you watching a freaking K drama and reacting to it. I'm just like, who the fucking died? Who That's fucking died? The surprise today? sexual assault. That's the thing that we say we still That's, does, just on yeah, that regular basis. She still does every it. Night. She still does it. This is what this, every is, night. this is my relaking time when I'm watching a K drama talking to my friends. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's oh, how I God. live my life. Anyways, damn it. Um, anyways, back to so back, back to I know. Um, <laughs> the brief this is history of the knee slapper reel. as well. <laughs> this, this is gonna be a fun blooper reel. Anyways, Kayla, do you have any other thoughts for I know? Uh, that's probably it. Can we move okay, on? Okay, so I did oh. a little bullet list. Um, I I, I gotta have. I gotta say I my opinion. I would look. You know we've been it? on this song for like ten minutes. I thought you. I thought, I thought you went okay, first. Okay, so some notes I. So some notes I dropped down is one is that this song is basically for Korean modern pop music, what Disney Snow White and the Seven Doors was for animation, and that and the fact of essentially to summarize it is is that it's it was definitely new and innovative and exciting. It doesn't mean it was necessarily perfect, but its influence has definitely stood the test of time. And that you just can't not say it's iconic. You know, it's. It, it, there definitely are moments where it's just like, what the fuck was the decision making for this? But you know what? In a way, it works out. It's not a perfect song, but it's a fun song. And I can see why it got so freaking popular, you know? It, to me, it has a cool... I love New Jack Swing. It has a cool mix of that. And then when you throw in the little rock elements, the little riffs during the break dance, break dance, little... Well, I guess during the live performances, they do a little break dance session to like the little rock guitar riffs there. I love that. Oh, if y'all ever checked out the English version of this, there's an English have it on version. Their there is. It's called Blind Love. Interesting. The, the lyrics. The lyrics are choice. Uh huh. Do um, they say words that they shouldn't? Uh, say? If you want to laugh, and there was a performance of this too that they did no, on a Korean music Maria, show. Of do the they English say version. words that they shouldn't? Yeah. Say? Like a lot of early K-pop, do they say words that are not socially acceptable to say? So, I don't think they say the N word. That's what because yes, because Shinwon does that. Shinwon does that, and Shinwa I have to, has and I that. have to just make sure before we recommend yeah. things to people. I think HOT did too. A lot of early K-pop. I don't think they realize that that's, that's not a word the that they're allowed the to say in rap, even in rap. <laughs> SM apparently was filled with stupid people, and they clearly thought it was okay to say this after listening to a couple of rap songs, and they didn't get the memo. Oh, but boy. that, but they got the memo. But yeah. And, and trust me, you're like, oh, are you sure they didn't say the Korean word no, for I? No, no there, trust me. It trust me, not trust me. You can, it's um, not. <laughs> they can tell you words. Words. from the context. You can, no, and you can, they, the they say those two words different. Those two words are different words. They have different, yep. so, like, you. Well, technically, there's a couple Korean words. It's like, I, uh, like, like, it's like, uh. There's two different Korean words. Yes, that sound they really sound similar. similar There's but Nega, they don't, and then like, if you of, yeah, they're both the songs, very similar. They don't like you can tell when they're using that word <laughs> and when they're using a di the the word we can't. I'm not gonna say. You can tell. But yeah, basically those Korean words essentially mean like I, it's I, 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 like, me, yeah. essentially. Yeah, it, they're, they're, they're very common. Yeah, and, like, but, but you can as an hear FYI. like e if you listen to K-pop now, but, you'll yeah. hear that word sprinkled throughout. For the most part, it sounds fine. Yeah. Certain K-pop artists will try to like bend that word to like you know. I've heard in Korean rap that they say ninja, so I mean, there's look, that. That's interesting. <laughs> I mean, I'll t look, look. But anyway, don't say the N word, K-pop idols. Don't say the N word. Like we should know. I should we should not know have to say now. this. But please, don't say the N -word. look. I remember the. This is the second episode of this podcast. We had to specifically beg Golden Child, please, Golden Child. Oh my Child. god, that was so stressful. I was stressed for a week that Golden, like, Golden Child, Child was going to say please. the N word because they were covering the what was the that the Shinwa Shinwa song. song? Yeah, because we were so scared that they hadn't edited it. I was so scared for so that. like the fact that it's it was Twinkle of Paradise, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, T O P. Yeah. yeah. So the fact that like. Yeah. We're Which in... is a shame because that's the song like, that got popular good song. too, and they use like Swan question Lake song. Song. like that cover is very good very good as well. But just the version that does not have one particular word. It's also yeah. very oh, yeah. funny and they just to took me. Out that whole verse it's also completely. very funny great. to me that that has aired great. on television, and it has. And they, they performed it at KCON yeah, too. It is very funny to me that 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 generally that word perfectly fine on television, but you can't show a tattoo. Korea. Korean censorship, everybody. Oh Anyways, all right, back, back to, to, back to the, the 
we're going on a lot of tangents uh, the today. English, the English version of this song is funny. Um, you, you can see why the youth went crazy over this shit. It was cool at the time. And I want to, I also for these songs, depending which albums they correspond with, I want to make a little commentary on the album. Uh, I actually really like this first album that I know is from. Uh, first, I don't know why I do, but I, I know it's not perfect, but I enjoy it a lot. Like, in particular, I love the song My Everything. And as the night goes on, and you and the fantasy is a funny song to me, especially seeing live performances of that, like watching the old videos of that. It's just kind of, it's a crazy song. There's like some weird, like high pitched sing, yelling, screaming thing. I'm like, what the fuck is this song on? But it's, it's a funny song. Uh, but personally, I have to say, I, as much as I love, I know um, my everything as the night goes on are great songs as well. I definitely recommend you check those songs out, especially as the night goes on. It's a really good, like new Jack swing R and B kind of vibe style song. Really good. Anyways, on to any house song, Sammy, you want to give me a, uh, what do you think? So about I'm just going to uh, Kayla, I think you and I have, I read your comment and I agree with it a hundred percent. Yeah, I was like, I have a comment for Sammy and Sammy only. And maybe the one person out there listening to this, who's also watched all of our produced content. We love content, you. You're great. We appreciate you. Was that there is, there is a part of the chorus that is very much reminds Ty, me of the song Tarzan next, next from door youth with that you they one. cover. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. From you with you one, Tarzan <laughs> next door. It, does yeah. remind me of that a lot. It's got vibes of yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and that's now all that I can think. I do like the Tarzan next door is also very much like the song you would expect it yes. to sound yes. like. I feel yeah. what you think that sounds like is what it sounds like. But also look it up. It's a very weird but fun performance, much mm -hmm. like a lot of produce China. Yes. But I, this is, again, where it's, like, there's a lot of underlying rock yeah. elements to the song that I do enjoy a lot. I mean, I do prefer the other yeah. song a lot more. I don't think I will... This song is... Yeah, Which I one? like I know. I know a lot more or, than I like this song, yeah. generally. But I like the rock element. No matter what I will say about an eight, of a of a Soteji song, I like the rock element. Because that's, that's always fun. Everything else is a little... I'm not as much a fan of this one. It's fine. I do love the token, um, the fact that they have token, uh, black people in it. This video. They're <laughs> oh, that's right, they do in the music video. <laughs> they're trying to get the, the street cred, guys. My question is, where the hell did they get some of these foreigners back in the day? Like, were they already in Korea? Like, that's, that's a what big, I want to I mean, know. you know, For I us? don't know the demographics of Korea back in the 90s, but I don't think there were that many foreigners. Exactly. So that's why I'm wondering, where the hell did they find these guys? Did they, did they just purge them from, like, the U.S. military maybe. base? Like, you gotta do, maybe. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Just like, yeah, you guys want to be in a music video? Cool. Come on. Yeah. Cool. Chill. I, I really, I'm curious about that, how those connections were made. But anyways, um, I, are you guys, uh, would you say, uh, Kayla, did you already say your thoughts? Yeah, or? that was that, like, okay. most of it, what I had to it's say. Tiger, it. It's All Tiger right. next door. Fair it's enough. Tarzan next door. Tarzan. Tarzan, Tarzan next, next door. door. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, so this song, uh, compared to um, Not Arayo or I Know, uh, Hagoya or Any House On, uh, definitely, for sure, is their big, I think, first notable instance of this is very rock influence. Like, you can just tell straight off the bat. Huge rock influence for the group. Not so much New Jack Swing, but there's still a dance element to it. Uh, I, I, and my personally, I feel like there's definitely that little grunge vibe there, but not completely, but it's there. And definitely, probably also the influence of Socha G having been in Shina Wee before, definitely probably played a part in that. Um, and that that rock sound definitely became much more prominent in their other albums. Surprisingly, the rest of this album of Soteji 2 that this song is a part of is a lot more pop. Uh, this this one kind of stands out a little bit. Um, and then, like, there's some, you know, uh, To You is, like, one of their probably their best-known ballad, I think. And then Swamp of Death, uh, I like that one. That one's a pretty – the title sounds kind of crazy, but it's actually not that bad of a song. I like that song. It's pretty solid. But otherwise – I kind of forget about this album, not gonna lie. Maybe it's def maybe some Koreans have a little bit more positive feelings toward this album, but personally, I think this is probably my least favorite for whatever reason. I don't know why. I don't think it's an objectively bad album, but 
it just doesn't i don't vibe with it as much as the other ones but yeah moving on to dreaming of balhe um so sammy what do you think hmm. this is again very very 90s it's it sounds like a lot of American 90s music. This is sort of the one where I've just seen, like, the... It just reminds me a lot of music from that era. Like, American music from that era. Yeah. It has, like, a very, like, like early 90s or, like... Mm -hmm. Or, like, late 90s, early 2000s, like, American, like, punk... Pop. Rock yeah. music type thing, which I do enjoy a lot, because I do like yeah. that type of music. That, that's so. probably one of my favorite American music eras, is that, like, early yeah. 2000s pop punk era. Right. <laughs> this song, I'd say, is definitely probably one of their... S it's a dance... They dance to this song, but it's definitely a slower one. This album... You know, I like this one because it's kind of like it. This is where they kind of also start to get into more of that talking about societal things kind of vibe. Not like you know talking about oh we didn't get the girl and blah 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 teenage youth kind of stuff. This is where an interesting one where they like, you know, they're kind of like uh, you know it's like dreaming. It's like more tied to like the Korean. I guess my understanding of the song is that it's more tied to like the Korean struggle like, Korean history or whatnot. I'm not quite sure of the, all the context of it, but it's definitely more... It's definitely one of their, like, more deeper meaning songs, for sure. And um, it's interesting, because there's live performances where Sotoji comes out playing the guitar to this, and it's like, oh, damn, he mixing it up a little bit. I like it. And, um... And it, it feels kind of like... I get this, like, inspiring vibe from it, which is weird. Especially when they're doing the dancing to this song. I'm like, what is going on with some of the choices of this? And I do like that guitar in the beginning. Because it kind of reminds me of, like, Tracy Chapman's fast car a little bit in the beginning. That little guitar thing that Sotoji does. But, um, yeah, it's a good song. It's definitely one of my more favorites that they promoted that I like a lot. Um, and we'll talk about the album yet. Because there's another song uh, from this album that we're going to talk about. It probably... The most, um, the one that got him in trouble the most, probably by the censorship board, Classroom Idea. Sammy, Kayla, or one of you, I don't know which one, but Sammy, I guess, thoughts first. What do you think? I like Classroom Idea. the concept, like the lyrics, I kind of like the vibes. Kayla described it as cultish, I'm into it. But I watched the live performance <laughs> I'm into it. and it was very yes. much like a yes, cult. Yes, <laughs> I'm into it. I'm into it. Don't love Screamo. I... I don't, don't love, love screaming because they did just go yeah. full on scream on. I'm like, not like, a that's fan of that. too far. <laughs> like, I like rock elements. I don't love screamo. I never liked screamo even when I was in like my like rock punk phase. Not a fan of screamo. And like, I don't know. It just like very much seemed like they were just a full band now. And yeah. I don't know if that was just because of the live performance that i watched or what but i was like it just seemed like they well, were just also, like this song just kind of just sounds like it's a like if like there's certain songs that you can tell are like made by like a pop group and songs made by bands this sounds like a song made by a band generally mm -hmm. yeah yeah i like i like i think i like the risk that they took with this song that they went full out with like a band kind of like vibe with this but <sighs> I don't, I'm not a big fan of Screamo either, but I just couldn't help but, like, laugh at it. Because I'm like, oh I my god, it happening, who did they I was find? Like, happening it's definitely right not one of them. It's definitely not one of them yeah. that did that Screamo part. They definitely purged someone well, from Well, yeah, no, I don't think do any of them have the vocal capacity. Like, Screamo is difficult. Like, it is hard to do that. So, like, they, that's how you blow out your vocal cords if you don't know how to do it. So they can all, I don't think they did it. Oh yeah, no, no. This the screamo part, by the way, happens in the main chorus. Um, for those who are curious, but um, yeah, it's kind of crazy. I'm like this song, just them talking about how they don't like the school setup in Korea. It definitely has such like Ed Lord vibes. It's definitely something that you could totally see appeal to teens. They're like, yeah, fuck school, screw that. I mean, but actually, though, the Korean school system, though, in all seriousness still to this day definitely has some problems so like i think the commentary on this in this song is definitely still somewhat relevant and probably it's a little bit more interesting now with the 
you know, how crazy social media and the internet and stuff has advanced. And you could, you could go all into that in, in your own theory, but uh, you know, it's interesting. It's an interesting song. It's a cool song to like, in my opinion, to like, you know, kind of start that kind of discussion point about school and whatnot. And just kind of like, Oh, they were kind of the first ones that had the balls to it. Whether the song's actually that great or not in terms of production or screamo wise, I'm not quite sure, but you know, it's definitely one of those that, like, if I was younger, I definitely, like, it, it reminds me of how I yes. felt when I listened to, like, songs from BTS back in the day, like, Tomorrow and stuff. It's like, it rem- takes me back to that time. Granted, BTS also did not go. And also, BTS did Actually, it reminds me of a song, song off of Darker Wild. I forgot yeah. what they did. The co- the co- a co- no, did they cover of Club Mac Home? Did they do a cover of Classroom uh, Idea? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, they did. Oh, I didn't know that. Um. Yeah, oh, they, they did, did at the KBS yeah. 2016 Film see... Festival, if anyone's curious. Huh. That's a time. I gotta watch that. Oh, man, I can't believe yeah. I missed that. Because I knew, obviously, about yeah. Come Back Home, but but I'm not surprised. Like yeah, BTS this, has always been cause... a group that's done a bunch of Soteji covers, and it makes sense. Like, I get it. It makes sense, too, especially yeah. with the content of songs yeah. from their earlier albums of BTS. They definitely go into, like, that discussions of, like, school and you know a little bit about society and I, it's, it's the one thing i kind of miss from their current discography because i feel like they don't really talk yeah about but i also much, feel like but they talk yeah. about different elements i think it's sort of an evolution i don't think bts can talk about school now when they're all pushing like 30 no no and, yeah not necessarily about school but just certain yeah. other things i kind of miss that era of them in a way but this is not anyway BT- this is not discussing now. the evolution of bts's discography which again if you're into that we might do an episode on that eventually maybe once they all go Please into the military when there's a good pause we won't that do we that know. for another three years yeah. at that point oh god we gotta go, go the to go to the end of next military. year it's the he end does. of next year yeah, it was an extension. It was an extension. Yeah, he got he that. Got the, that is the extension. Is the end of twenty twenty two. So yeah. the end of next year. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Which again is a very right, long well. extension. Oh yeah, that is honestly. He's almost. He he's gonna be yep. thirty when he goes. Into he the will military. be thirty. I think he's he's gonna stand out, and everyone else with him will be at least ten Look, to twelve years Look, the man has got to get a his. He's gonna be an old man. Oh, a lot of people that go into Korean military bet- typically enlist either right out of high they school or do college. It, a lot of them college, do it between, so. like, because college is four years. They do it after the first two and before the last two. They kind of take a break in the middle. Or they go right out yeah, of high school. Yeah, and a lot of them do it because companies, because yeah. a lot of companies won't yep. hire you if you have Because done your then service. at that point, yeah, they lose you for obviously. two years. So they, they want to they get it out of the way before they finish college so that they actually can get a job. So a lot of these celebrities literally are entering the military with like their comrades being like maybe possibly well, yeah because they them. they have a but job actually. and like <laughs> you can't waste the most precious years of your youth when you're young and pretty to go into the military. Oh yeah. Anyways, classroom idea. I think it's iconic, but I also think yeah, it's not the most perfect thing. But you know what? A for effort for trying with the screamo. Next, and um, that album in general, I do enjoy it, but not as much as the first one or the next album or songs we will talk about. To be about. honest, uh, must to be it. honest, I think what I have sorely started to realize is that I think I like Sotiji less and less the longer it went on. It, it does. I do think I enjoyed it less we, and less the, 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 the songs later. You showed the us. Songs I don't know if it was on. just the songs that we listened to or if that's just indicative of the albums as a whole. But as it went on, I started liking them less and less, uh, because I don't really like- The chorus of this song is fine. That's not the problem. The problem is, what is going on with the man's voice? Why does he sound like that? Like, (laughs) Like, oh my god, why does he suddenly sound like that? (laughs) Oh god, yeah. Yeah, I- I- okay- I, I have a reason why I picked this song, but I'm gonna let you. No, that, talk that's about my opinion. Is first. why why are we doing this in in the in the vert? Like what? It's what like all doing? of a sudden we're like using the worst like possible singing voice imaginable. Like. Almost like to the point where this is an in- <laughs> this is an intentional choice that you're making, and someone should have. Yeah. Like it's almost seems like it's one of those situations where a group gets so big, everyone is too scared to say maybe do something else. 
I think because th- this was this was a bad choice. Choices were made. All right. So my opinions on must triumph. All right. Yeah, I agree with y'all. The high pitched voice is kind of fucking weird. Not gonna lie. It, I'm just like, what the fuck were you thinking, so Taji? But you know what? He wanted to go all out for the last album with the boys. So there you go, I guess. But yeah, the rest of the song I really do like though. Um, I like the I like the the vibe. It transports me back. It's very nostalgic for me, and it's crazy too. The okay, so the MV, the music video for the song is really interesting because they decide these motherfuckers decide to not only dye their hair crazy ass neon colors, they decide to play instruments on top of a freaking flat big big ass truck driving through what I think is Seoul. For all I know, it could be another city in Korea, but I have a funny feeling it's probably most likely Seoul. Um, and they're like driving and just filming this music video while they're performing. And then it's funny because during the music video, they, they, they fil- the, the camera crew gets shots of people that they pass by in the street. And you, it's great. It's so great to see the faces of these, like, especially the kids just freaking out going like, oh my God, it's them. Like freaking out being like, oh my God, it's them. It's them. It's so tedgy. And the boys, oh my God, they're like freaking out. It's great. I, I'm like, that's iconic. And I wonder if any of those kids actually watched the music video to be like, oh, we got to see if I'm in it. I wonder if any of them were able to find themselves. I wonder. That, that must be a cool like thing to be like, hey, look at me. I'm spontaneously in a so tedgy music video. But I don't know. I just find that so funny. And like, it, it's also a testament to how freaking influential and big they were. It's crazy. But yeah. Anyway, so that's my thoughts on that song. Um, you know. Cool. Anyways. And the last one we're going to talk about is arguably, probably, their, besides I know, their most iconic song, Come Back Home. You must come back home. Where and, uh, uh, something totally where it kind of ties into similar New Jack Swing sound, except they decided to go full on gangster rap for this shit. Sammy, tell me your thoughts, girl. So, um, I've never, I've, I've, this is maybe the first Sotiji song I've heard. I've never really been that big a fan of it. One, I don't really like gangster rap to begin with, for one. Don't really love the genre. Don't love the way they say come back home in the song. The, whatever the, whoever's doing that nasal You bit, must come back Yeah, that's home. gotta, Again, question, that's gotta why stop. are we doing this? The nasal Much stuff. like the last part, much like the last song, that's my question stop. is why are we doing this? Why did we make these choices? The nasal but, bits are probably yeah. most likely so tedgy, honestly, if I am to be honest. So yeah, he's gotta, he's gotta stop, you he's gotta stop icon, that. But also, why are we doing this? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's not bad. I'm not gonna say it's bad. It's just not a genre that I personally listen to or that I personally enjoy. If you like this style of song, you'd love this. I'm not a bigger fan. It's also not necess- it also leans out of the rock elements a lot that I liked from them. It's a lot so eh. it's not my favorite. Somehow again, the early the early so titchy stuff is where I was like full in. Yeah, I think I definitely, this is weird, but I do like their earlier stuff a lot more. I'm also not a big fan of, like, gangster rap as a whole, but I think it's because I've heard BTS's version of it that I've gotten, like, used to the song in a way, so I enjoy it, I think, more than I I normally would. I have probably listened to the BTS version more than I have. Oh, for sure, yeah. The Sotichi version? Mm Mm-hmm. So I've almost gotten more used to hearing BTS sing it than I am the actual group. Yeah. But again, I it's also not my favorite BTS song. Because it's not a BTS song. It isn't. I It also had very similar vibes uh, from the song to H.O.T.'s Warrior's Descendant. And that's a song that I've recently liked because One Us covered it on Road to Kingdom. Yeah. Um, but I had similar vibes to that song, so... Now that you said Warriors it definitely was probably inspired by Come Back Home. Oh, yeah, I, I would highly, so. highly yeah. speculate that. I, I don't think it's I, it's probably not even a question at this point. But but yeah, um, so uh, I think you said you, you said your thoughts right. You're right, Kayla. Yeah, okay. yeah. So um, for me, 
uh, contrary to you two, I freaking love 90s rap. <laughs> so this was totally up my fucking alley. And it definitely reminded me, and also part of the reason why I fell in love with particularly BTS in general was because of the fact of their, like, rap skills. And, like, I, I, I rap's always been, rap and hip-hop has always been a genre I've always loved. So, like, doing them doing this was like, ooh, this is a cool take on it. And, yeah, it's, it's like, it reminds me a lot of, like, House of Pain, Cypress Hill, like, I won't say Mob Deep, but just, like, those, because those guys kind of have, like, more of a higher pitch rap style that I've enjoyed. And the message of this song, too, is, like, the crazy thing about this song, too, is how freaking influential it was. Because, essentially, it was about, like, the youth being like, hey, come back home, guys. Don't, don't run away from your problems, you know? Even if things are hard. And it actually did work. Reportedly, the song was pretty influential that a lot of runaway youths did end up coming <laughs> back home. Hence, hence another word of testament to how freaking influential So Teji and the boys were. That a freaking song convinced kids to actually go back home. <laughs> Come back home. Straight up. And that's like the craziest thing about this song. But yeah, I really enjoy this song a lot. Mainly because, though, I do love rap. And this gave me those vibes. And I'm just like, I think they did. I think So Teji in particular, you know, did want to do a legitimately decent job at this and i think he pulled it off for the most part and the other guys i think you know did their part too and i think the the rap definitely the the um pop rap i guess you could say because i don't know if it's technically legit the minutiae of details i don't know if you could argue if it's technically good rap but i think they did a pre i think it's uh, an improvement from earlier attempts at rapping that they've done um and i, I think it's a solid song you know I think it's good, and I'm glad this is one of their more well liked songs off of their off of their entire discography. And um, I also want to say another song I want to highlight off of this fourth album. I, I I go back and forth whether I like this one or the first album more, but definitely I think they he decided to go out. So G wanted to definitely go out with a bang for the group with this album, and I think they did a pretty good job. Regret of the times, I think it's a fantastic song to check out too. Highly recommend y'all go listen to that. Um, but yeah, it's it's a solid album um i it's interesting though because it's like it's more rock elements and then the first album is definitely more like pop you know catchy hip-hop kind of like elements so i'm not quite sure which one i prefer frankly but i think they're both good in their own ways and it's like crazy because they're both mostly different styles besides obviously a standout like come back home in this album but you know I don't know. I, def I definitely say if you go to listen to any of Sotachi stuff, definitely check out their first and their last album. It, it, it definitely... I think they're both probably some of the better... They're better made albums. But yeah. Um, so I guess um, final thoughts from Sammy and K... Uh, from, I guess, Sammy first. Uh, whether yes or no, you would listen them to... You would listen to them again. And then anything else you want to say, commentary about the group. I mean, generally, I'm not opposed to listening to more Soteji. I enjoy what I what I heard, especially their early stuff. I mean, like like most groups, it's a little hit and miss depending on the concept and the genre. I'm not the biggest fan of that genre to begin with. But again, they're good. I like them. So if you were to listen to them again, you'd probably go for more of their earlier stuff is what I'm getting yes. at. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Kayla, what about you, girl? So I generally, like, don't have much of a want to listen to, like, any of the 90s, like, early 2000s K-pop groups as a whole. <laughs> There's so, too much current K-pop. Yeah. Much less going <laughs> like, back we know, to the Like, we past. know my opinions on retro music generally, so it's, like, it's not really something I would no. willingly go back and listen Actively to. I seeking this out is not no. in the cards. I didn't know how rock inspired they were initially, so I do like that. So, um, I wouldn't be opposed to, like, finding, like, more of their music that was that, but as a whole, I don't think I would, their, like, their type of music is something I would seek out, like, on a regular basis or something. But I did enjoy it more than I was expecting to, though. So Interesting. Okay. That was good, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I like their stuff. Compared to other music acts I've listened to, I, I get why they're popular. I don't go, I 
oftentimes it really depends on what kind of kick I'm in, whether I'll listen to Soteji or not, and the boys a lot. I mean, and again, I also really like Soteji's individual works. Like, I, I really do, especially Ultramania. That's, I love, that's a great album. Um, But, yeah, I, if I am going to go back to Soteji, it's most likely going to be either the songs that we chose for this episode or either most likely probably the first or the fourth album, depending if I'm in the mood for it. But yeah, I mean, I think they're definitely one of the better, you know, for being one of the first ones to really influence the music industry. I think they had, you know, first kind of as not as big of a discography as I thought they would have because some of their songs really only have like six full length songs and then the rest are just like remixes or edits for TV or whatnot. It's like kind of weird. But um, yeah, I think it's a pretty solid, you know, for for the time, for what they were doing, especially for what Sotechi was doing with this group. I think it's, you know, a pretty solid discography. And yeah, I, for me, I like listening to older music. So this is definitely one that, depending if I'm in the mood for it, I'll go back and listen to. But it really depends on what's going, what's going on in my life and what I, what I feel like listening to today. Because I do have kind of some varied music taste. <laughs> but um. If, if you two are definitely aware of that. Like I, I branch out and listen to some weird crap. Like I, I've gotten, in, I've gotten back a little bit into African pop Look, lately. We will, it's, it's a time. We will, we will just be looking at what everyone's listening to, and it's K-pop. K, the knee slappers will just, you'll see the knee slappers and just like K-pop, 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 random thing in languages I don't know <laughs> that I don't speak. I feel it's, if anything, you're you're you guys focus more on like Japanese or Chinese music. Yeah, we got and you. Then, like, and then it's me, and I'm Japanese. just listening to random crap. Yeah. I, it's like, oh, Maria's listening to Hillary Duff. She found her 2000s playlist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really depends on the mood. I have varied music tastes, but I like talking about K-pop a lot because I think it's of all the music genres I listen to, it's definitely one of the most interesting ones to have discussions about and whatnot. But. I mean, and do you guys have any final thoughts in terms of Soto G and the boys, their music, what you think about them? Um, Soto G, great. The boys can go fuck themselves. <laughs> Generally. <laughs> yeah. Is anyone opposed to that statement? No. I? No. I mean, no. Exactly. So basically what I'm hearing is I need to eventually talk about Soteji's solo discography. Yes. Okay, I agree with that He statement. was the main star of that group. I agree with that. It is Soteji. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I mean, hey, they're influential for a reason, even though individual members have made some choices horrifying in their lives. Mistakes. Horrifying Sometimes choices. Um, I'm not talking... For some reason, dancers there got into some fucked up shit don't know why but but yeah i mean the influence that these guys have is definitely nothing to gawk at you know it's crazy how much no. just one act could like totally change the pop culture and music pop music in general for one freaking country is insane and the foundation they laid is like it's crazy how much that has been so influential like at this point almost 30 years later you know, but yeah, so yeah, that's Sail Teji. They're definitely a group I'd say for people to at least check out. Maybe you might not feel some of the music choices that So Teji has made attempts with experimenting sounds, but you know what? I think it's definitely one of those groups that you should just at least try to listen to once just to be like, okay, so this is what they made attempts at in the beginning. Whether you like it or not, that's up to you, but yeah. So yeah, I think that's about roughly it for this episode i can't think of anything else to say except i hope i can continue this kind of series into the future don't know how frequent it will be but i want to <laughs> yeah but making making a return will be fun at some point in time yeah genuinely none of our series go on for like more than no like our, one we have several series i feel like they most most of them have died we've so. never done another fucking reality show past the genius no we did the genius and that was it <laughs> Exactly. Well, I definitely do. We, but I definitely do want to. Maybe it doesn't have to be strict, but I definitely do want to talk about some more influential groups and artists from back in the day, and have you guys come on and, you know, maybe see if you guys like them or not. 
you know, I, I definitely want to continue with that. It just probably, especially now, I, I don't foresee it being super frequent, but whenever I get the um, influence to. But there's definitely one in particular I want to talk about next, and for sure, that we've mentioned quite a bit. Quite a bit of, but... <laughs> so, but yeah. But I definitely, if I do continue with future episodes, I don't think they're going to be as long as this episode, for the most part, depending on who we're talking about, though. But some of them yeah, might. Some of them might. we can go on. So, depending on, you know, who, whoever I feel like talking about. Some of them might be a little bit longer because there might be more information. Others, there might not be, but... And then it'll be more focused on the songs. But, yeah. But anyways, uh, yeah, that's my birthday episode, I guess. Woo! <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah. Woo! So yeah, that was another fantastic episode of the Knee Slap and K-Pop Podcast. Check us all out on wherever we are available we to Twitter listen to. And yeah. an Instagram. We have an Instagram and um, our YouTube channel if you're listening to us on podcasting sites. And if you're listening to us on YouTube, we are also on all major podcasting platforms. So yay. Yes. You are so good at that, Kayla. I'm not. <laughs> Kayla's the only one that posts on the socials. She knows yeah. She knows what the fuck she's doing. That's good. I love it. All right. Well, All right. happy birthday happy again. Birthday. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, have, happy birthday to me, I guess. And uh, thanks, y'all, for listening. Um, catch you whenever I decide to show back up at some point hopefully sooner than later but I'm a, yeah I'm you'll, say be, right you'll now, be back soon. Oh, i'll be back soon Kayla i know i'll be back soon be back. but yeah i'll be back very soon but um <laughs> but I'm gonna tell like you tomorrow right, <laughs> i'm gonna tell you right now i'm gonna bet it right now kayla and i we will be on next week's episode both of us both yes both of us will we be will on next we week's will episode. be both be on next week's episode exactly yeah we're both on next yep. week's episode but yeah um and speaking of next week episode, we will see you next time. See you next time, y'all. Bye. 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 Love you. XOXO Gossip Girl. <laughs>